Puerto Sor de la Vida is a very awesome place if you like to have fun. This year I was packed three weeks in advance. My favorite thing is seeing friends. This camp is great for kids because you get to do the high rope scores. I like archery and the horseback riding that they have. A challenge course is always fun. I love challenge course. Swimming at Campo de Soro feels really good uh, after a long hot day. And the food is wonderful. Everyone's so nice to me and I just, I love it. I absolutely positively love it here. You know, this program is sponsored by the First Texas Council of Campfire. Um, amazing that several years ago they saw the need. Um, my understanding is that someone who worked there saw the need, had someone die, and they realized they needed something. There ought to be something out there. Campfire had the camp, and why couldn't we use the two? I think it's the perfect marriage of, of doing grief work, combining it with the outdoors activity, um, and I, I appreciate the fact that they had the vision to do that. I think that when I went to camp, I thought that I would be helping the children. And what I quickly learned was that the children would become my teachers and that they really would teach me lessons that I still have. They taught me about courage and they taught me about hope and they taught me about faith and how to keep moving forward in really some of the most unimaginable situations. So I left there not the same person I was when I started. Well, we have the great privilege of working with children in many stages of their grief process. Some come to us fresh, and this is the first experience they've had in talking about their grief and loss. And it may be several months um, to several weeks since the person in their life has died. And they come to us raw, um, not knowing who to talk to, what to do, um, not knowing there's anyone like them. If you have had a mother who died, would you please stand up? Now I want you to look around and see that there are other people who are like you. Thank you guys. Why don't you sit down for me? If you have had a father who died, would you please stand up? Now that's a lot. There were a whole lot of you who stood up. You know what it's like. All of you know what it's like to have your father die. Hope you see someone who's like you. Well, my sister died. She died on August 8th. And what I remember that day is we were all at the hospital. I didn't, I couldn't go in the room where she was laying. So, like, this nice nurse, apparently she had an Xbox. So she brung it in and we started playing. She had a lot of stuff going wrong with her. She had to go to the doctor five times a week. Um, an hour after she died, they told me. Me and my brother were playing, and then my dad called. And then me and my brother walked in there and gave her a hug. Even though she was gone. We were sad, but she was, I don't really know how to describe it. My dad died of an overdose in January. I felt angry that he would do something he knew could take him away from us but didn't stop. And I'm guilty because the last words I said to him, like me and my friend got in this fight or something, I don't even remember the whole story, but I told him I hated him. The day after Christmas, they took me to Kailua Beach where I'd grown up and told me that my mom was going to die. And then on February 7th, she passed away. Even though she had cancer, that didn't stop her from being a good mom. On Christmas Eve, she came all the way to our church from the hospital just to watch me as Mary in the Christmas pageant. I mean, she was a dedicated mother. And her last words to me were, I love you. And it just, it makes it a little bit easier knowing how much she really loved me. I lost my big brother, Trayvon. Let's see, he was sick and had cancer. And it traveled all the way up to his lungs so he couldn't breathe. And he died. My dad died um, April 6, 2009. I was on the way for, back from school and I heard my mom talking to somebody about my dad. 
My sister overheard my mom saying something uh, over the phone. And um, my mom, Ava, asked, what are you talking about? My mom started crying, and then my brother asked if my father passed away, and she started hugging us and said yes. It was kind of shocking at first, and my mom told us right there in the car. It was kind of hard to not cry or anything. As a child, my favorite memories at grief camp um, were, were just the close, the the relationships I built um, that ended up, you know, sustaining over the years, even to this day. Uh, I met a counselor named Shane Mudge that ended up being there for me, and 20 some odd years later, he's still there for me. My first year at camp was in uh, 1989. I uh, worked out here on the summer staff, and um, you know, towards the end of the uh, summer uh, regular camp season, uh, the camp director at the time approached me and said, hey, you gotta stick around and work the grief camp. And I was like, what's a grief camp, you know? And uh, so I stuck around and worked that week and got hooked on it, you know? And i uh, been out here 22 years. At Camp El Tesoro de la Vida, I work with arts and crafts. Um, we get the kids about an hour a day, and we just do all sorts of stuff with them. We make flip-flops, we make t-shirts, we make bracelets, all sorts of stuff. I did start working De La Vida until 99. I really enjoy what can happen at the archery range when the kids either make their first bullseye or hit the target, that excitement that happens. Like, I did it, I did it. So as part of De La Vida, regardless of how sad they might have been or the feelings that they're having in group, then we can come to archery and we can have a good time and we can learn a new skill. And every year or two, there's one kid that really touches you somehow. You know they're gonna take something away more intrinsic than just the skills that they did. And so that keeps bringing me back. I guess the first time we came, we uh, were here on Sunday night when the kids got here and um, sat with our kids that we were assigned to be with and both had very special kids that year. And we came back after opening ceremonies and kind of looked at each other and went, this is gonna be a lifelong commitment for us. We, uh, we were hooked. Um, I think we felt like we could make a difference in these children's lives. It's a place where it's safe. They come in all week long, it's Nurse Barbara and Nurse Sally, and they know they're safe with us and with all the counselors here. And uh, we truly were hooked. To know that you make a difference in a child's life for the rest of their life, it, that's pretty powerful and it's pretty rewarding. At Camp Peltosoro, I'm a cabin buddy, and it means that I'm assigned a group of girls, and I stay with them for the entire week. We sleep in the same cabin. We do. We sometimes share activities together. Every day we attend a group session. Um, we talk about a wide variety of things, including sometimes the death of their loved ones. And of course, death is something that we can't stop. We, we can most definitely make the hurt a little less by being here. What we hope to do through the group therapy process, but also just through coming to camp, is we want to give them an emotional toolkit. Um, just giving them the things they need to be able to go through the obstacles of life, to live life and still grieve, but to do it on their own terms. Camp El Tesoro is definitely a place you want to come if you lost someone. They help you understand that it's okay to cry, it's okay to express your feelings. I love Camp El Tesoro because they're just, there's all kinds of walks of life here and there's all different stories and nobody's judged and it's a break from the normal. I mean, you're around almost a hundred other kids that are just like you and you feel like there's actually, you're not alone anymore. Camp Altasoro has helped me through my grief of losing my father, and I don't want to leave camp. Camp Altasoro gives me a sense of peace that I haven't, that I don't usually get, and it's, it's nice because you can talk to someone here. You can really feel what they're feeling, and it's a lot about empathy and compassion, and just, it's letting your grief out. So you can get over your feelings, have fun a little, and meet some new friends. Other people are like you, you're not alone, and they'll help you get through it. 
and it's what a Camp Altasaur is all about. They want to make sure you have fun, but only talk about your loved person a little bit. Camp Altasaur is a great place, and I think everybody should come here. One of the issues with doing this camp and the growth that we've had over all these years is the funding component of it. Um, it's an expensive venture. When you think about having as many kids as we have and volunteers and feeding them, um, when you really think about everything that goes into this experience, um, it's not cheap to put on a week camp. El Tesor de la Vida exists because of the generosity of individuals. This camp relies on individual dollars uh, to provide camperships for the children. And we can't choose in life how we are hurt, and we can't prevent what happened to these children. But I think that as donors, we can do our very best to make sure that they heal in a very healthy and the best way possible. Children are always an investment. But when you look at the type of children who go here, they're a different brand. It's because they've lost someone. And when you lose someone, you think, or you may feel, that the world may be lost to you, that opportunities may be lost to you. But when someone else makes an investment in you, that means I believe in you. That means I believe in your future. That means that no matter what you have gone through, I believe that you'll get through it and you'll make it through to the other side. I think I get just as much out of it as, as, the, as the kids do. I mean, this is what boosts me up for the rest of the year and carries me for a whole year. I think getting out here, seeing these kids, and realizing that you think you got rough times in your life, and then you see these kids that are seven, eight years old and what they're going through, you don't have it that bad. You know? So, you realize that. Uh, It's worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.